few years ago, I think three years ago, Sean Dubois, who's the founder of an open source project called Pion, got acquired, not acquired, basically got hired at OpenAI. It was a starking revelation for me. Um, building an open source project usually isn't very rewarding. Um, generally not the best thing to do. Well, one thing that's not great is to raise a lot of money for an open source project because there's no clear path to monetization. Uh, the only place where it's worked out well is Next.js plus Vercel. In this video, we're talking about the Bun acquisition. Bun.js team company, I think the runtime, has been acquired by Anthropic, which is one of the fastest growing companies right now. Um, we'll try to dive deeper into why this acquisition might make sense, uh, what might happen to the future of Bun, how Bun has performed really well over the last few years. It's become my popular runtime. Whenever I'm coding most of the applications, they happen in TypeScript. Um, and I think around a year ago, since a year, I don't think I've ever touched Node.js. Uh, I've been only working with Bun, uh, the speed at which they've grown. Um, Narrate compatibility for a bunch of, you know, frameworks, runtimes, tools um, is actually astonishing. Um, the surprising thing always for a lot of people was how will Bun ever make money because they were VC funded. I think they raised around $25 million. Um, most probably the answer was becoming something like Vercel, which means provide cloud deployments in some form or fashion. Um, I'm happy that didn't have to go through because once that happened, I think the fate of the runtime wouldn't move as fast as um, it was right now. So the good thing was the team was focusing completely on Bun right now. Um, Bun ended up becoming an exceptional product, um, not a product like a runtime or whatever you want to call it, a Node.js replacement. Um, and now the team can probably solely focus on that. Um, as the team joins the Ananthropic team, we'll dive deeper today into why it probably makes sense for Ananthropic. A surprising revelation for me, which is that Claude code is actually written in Bun. Bun. Um, it was written in Node.js, I think, up until a year ago and migrated to Bun around that time. Um, and how Claude code, which is an app layer product for Ananthropic, which is primarily an AI app, um, ended up becoming a big revenue generator. Um, and lastly, why this acquisition makes sense. With that, let's get right into the video. All right, we'll start off with a tweet. This tweet came out around three months ago, um, where Claude Code tweeted that they now have a native installer. Uh, which basically means you do not require Node.js to run Claude Code locally on your machines, um, which sort of tells that the original version of Claude Code was actually written in Node.js. The same was true for Codex, which is uh, Claude Code's competitor by OpenAI. It was originally written in Node.js, eventually migrated to Rust. And the good thing about Codex is that it's actually open source. So I think around a year ago, they open sourced. Uh, I remember the first day I opened it up and I saw, I think, Codex CLI, which was the original product, which was primarily a Node.js CLI. I don't think this is the right folder, but I'm sure we'll find it somewhere here. Seems like they got rid of the TypeScript code completely now and the complete project Codex is now written in Rust. Uh, is it a good thing or a bad thing? God knows, because uh, I don't think latency or anything that Rust provides uh, makes a lot of sense for a product like this because this product will anyways be extremely slow uh, thanks to a, a bunch of LLM calls that are happening. Um, so I don't think the goal here was to squeeze the maximum performance by moving over to Rust. Uh, and that's why I think Claude Code sort of stuck with Node.js. The only extra thing that they did was they moved from Node.js to Bun around a year ago. But how can we be really sure uh, that most of these apps that Anthropic is writing are written in Bun? I have a few speculations. Number one, Claude Code Action, uh, which is another tool that they have that probably lets you do, you know, PR reviews, things like these, is open source written in Bun. Um, the Claude Code CLI's final bundle is a JavaScript bundle that you can find on NPM. Um, at the top, you can find a job listing. If you open the job listing, um, you'll find that the job is for someone who's good in TypeScript and who has been working with alternate runtimes like Deno and Bun. I was able to find a link somehow um, to probably the actual Claude Code repository. It is a private repo, but I found a link which links to a package.json at the root level, which probably again means uh, that most of their code is written in JavaScript and it's pretty obvious through the acquisition that the runtime that they're using is Bun. So I think it's a fair assumption to make that most of their tools were written in Bun and it probably made sense for them to acquire the team to number one, move fast. And number two, um, this is like another sidetrack, but I think most of the low level languages like Zig, Rust, C uh, don't have enough data on the internet and most of these labs are probably optimizing uh, to become the best at a specific language. Uh, if there is great Zig expertise somewhere in the world, it's in the Bunjas team. So that might be another reason they might use the Bun team for, which is a lot of data slash uh, expertise, specifically not in Bun, but in Zig, which is the underlying language that Bun is written on top of. There are two blog posts, one by the Anthropic team and the other one by the Bun team, both of them laying out why the acquisition made sense. For Anthropic, I think it's pretty obvious. They were able to reach a billion dollars in six months, which probably means this tool is growing really fast. And whenever a tool is growing really fast in a niche that's 
highly speculated at this moment. Um, the kind of multiples you can get for this revenue is really high, so it sort of makes sense to you know probably throw away some uh, change to acquire the team, uh, considering you're, the, you're making this kind of money uh, and you have multiples of an AI lab. Um, for Bun, I think most people are very interested to know the future of Bun, and from what I can tell right now, and pure speculation from the side, uh, this will probably make the runtime go faster. They'll probably have more resources uh, because even though Bun was uh, funded. Uh, was a VC backed startup. Uh, at the same time, I think this was around the time they would probably want to figure out monetization. Um, and as I said, as they started to figure out monetization, they probably wouldn't have enough expertise or time or enough of the team working on the actual runtime. Um, now they have enough resources to focus on the runtime. Um, at the same time, I think some of the engineers, probably the founder, is going to move to Cloud Code um, and you know build that as a side product for an anthropic internally. There are probably two paths that Bun could have taken at this point. One would have been the Vercel route, which is to uh, monetize themselves through a cloud deployment platform and wait for the product to get an option, uh, probably make revenue, and hopefully you know raise the next round. The other one being getting acquired by an AI lab, and I think they were small enough right now uh, to get acquired. Uh, I think the second path makes a lot of sense for the runtime, for the team, for the VCs, uh, and for everyone involved. Uh, I think overall, Bun would probably move faster. Uh, I think similar speculations were made when GitHub was acquired by Microsoft. Is this a good idea? Uh, will Microsoft now uh, you know, look at everyone's code and have access to everyone's code? But I read a tweet back then, which was, okay, if you're probably uh, worried about the your code security and you know, uh, Microsoft engineers uh, having access to it, uh, it probably is better if it's acquired by a company like Microsoft, uh, which has compliance in place to make sure uh, no one can see any other, anyone else's uh, private repositories compared to uh, GitHub just being a startup which can just run wild. Uh, I think the same thought makes sense here. Uh, a bigger company with compliance in place will probably make sure that the runtime grows independently, uh, probably remains a mighty license uh, for the future, uh, and at the same time, you know, uh, is able to reap off the benefits of the engineers and the expertise that they've built uh, over the last few years. Which also leads to, uh, Another speculation around why are these AI labs focusing too much on the app layer rather than focusing on the LLM layer? Uh, I think every big AI lab right now has some level of bets in a browser, in a coding CLI, a coding editor, uh, which probably means a few things. Number one, uh, they're probably not seeing enough upside in improving the model even further. And there probably needs to be a new architecture, something better that helps us reach AGI. Uh, Number two, these companies, of course, were valued uh, heavily, had great multiples compared to their revenues, and probably want to IPO soon enough. Uh, that's true for Anthropic and OpenAI. Uh, and to be able to justify those revenues, they're trying to build at the app layer, but get the multiples um, of an AI lab. Um, and that, again, sort of makes sense, but also uh, it's a little worrying in the fact that these companies have to rely on, you know, competing at the app layer with companies like NA10 or Chrome or cursor uh, to actually justify the revenues before the IPO. Is that a good thing? Are the LM labs in trouble uh, when it comes to their valuations? Uh, time will tell, but these are clear signs that they're probably struggling to uh, maintain growth at the LLM layer, uh, which is why they have to tap into the app layer now. Next point is, uh, are software engineers going to be obsolete now thanks to you know companies as good as or as big as Anthropic focusing on coding tools or coding assistants now? Um, I think, I don't know, this is very hard to tell right now and whatever I say is probably going to be pure speculation. Um, the acquisition sort of points to the fact that good people or you know expertise in a specific niche is going to help a lot. Um, I don't think engineers could have expected to get acquired or you know make money as much as the founders or the employees of Man might have made right now um, purely by working on an open source project um, and you know honing their skills and trying to build a better variation or a better uh, alternate for Node.js um, and that sort of still remains true. Um, in the future, most probably expertise or extreme expertise in a specific niche is going to uh, be rewarded fairly well. Does that mean low-level engineers, early engineers, junior engineers will not be needed? I think this is, again, pure speculation, God knows. Um, but even if that is the case, um, I think it, it might not be the worst thing in the world that people can you know, focus on other things rather than doing menial tasks or menial coding tasks that can probably be done by AI. The same logic sort of applies to you. You don't really need a mathematician um, if you have a calculator, not a mathematician, but you don't need to do menial tasks as a mathematician if now that you have a calculator. You don't need to pick stones by hand now that you have machines. Um, and if there are easier menial coding tasks that are taken over by CLIs like these. Uh, it would probably make sense and you know, new jobs may or may not evolve uh, to you know, uh, fill the gap uh, that might be created uh, in the junior engineering market. Lastly, congratulations to the Bun team. Uh, and hopefully this path makes a lot of sense for people in the future to build deep tech products and open source them. And, and hopefully they have an exit by the end of it. Uh, this is nothing new, ha has been happening for a few years. I think a few early engineers of MySQL were hired by Facebook back in the day. Uh, as I said a while back, Sean Dubois, who's the founder of uh, Pion, which is the WebRTC framework, was hired, acquired by OpenAI, and the Bunge's complete team uh, was now hired by uh, Anthropic. So if anything, uh, if you have an ambitious idea to pursue, could be non-monetizable at the moment, uh, but something that actually improves the DevX. And I don't think it's incorrect to say that Bunge's substantially improved the DevX uh, when it comes to JavaScript engineers. Uh, 
if you feel like you have an idea like this, there's probably an acquisition, an acquire or a job waiting for you by the end of it. So if you do have an idea like this, do pursue it. Um, that's probably the learning from this video and congrats to the Bun team one more time. With that, we'll end it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.